In a regular council meeting, Monday, June 1st, 2015, 7 p.m., we'll now come to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybach? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present. Thank you. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Jeff Christmas of the First Baptist Church. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful for another day that we can share together in the business of our fair city. We're grateful for the leaders that you've installed here to lead us, and we pray that, Father, as we conduct uh, your business this evening, that uh, we would do so graciously and uh, in the best interest of one another. Uh, again, we're thankful for our first responders and for those that stand in the gap to protect us, and we uh, pray a special uh, blessing upon them as well. Again, be with us tonight, Father, we pray, and we ask it in, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We're going to use the flag up here tonight. We're going to change it around a little bit for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The flag will please everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, uh, action on the minutes of regular meeting, May 18th, 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kraybacher, second by Mr. Reynolds. Any questions? Council, anyone? Nothing? All right, if you would, Mr. Carr. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. Now, before we go on, I've got a couple uh, announcements. Full passes. Number one, uh, they're giving a $50 uh, break on the pool pass for a family. It's $150 now. Is that correct? Correct. For the time being. I, I don't know whether that will change or not. So if anybody likes a pool pass, all you need to do is go to the city building for the family and get a pool pass. I think it's, what, family of four, is that correct? Family of four, I believe. Four, and then you pay extra for each one of this one, I believe. Uh, shower house is still available for rent. I think it's pretty well booked up at the moment, but you can always call the city building and see if you would like to rent this. I know it's been used quite a bit, and that's a very good thing for the city. And also the cemetery, we still have lots for sale. Anyone who's interested in a lot in the cemetery, they're opening up new areas in the cemetery, and we'll be happy to talk to you at the city building again. One other thing, if you have a cell phone, if you please turn it off, or if you would put it on vibrate, certainly appreciate it. And now we will go to uh, communications, which we have Mr. Ron Cobb would like to say something this evening, I believe. Can you go up to the podium, sir? <clears throat> My name is Ronald Cobb, 202 Miller Drive. What I want to address council with here this evening is get the support and the backing to try to start a program called COPP, Citizens on Preventative uh, Patrol. I've been talking to uh, Sheriff Kelly, uh, Deputy Chief Wright, and City Manager uh, Randy Bridge. Uh, some of you all should have a copy of everything. Uh, there's 42 cities in the state of Ohio or municipalities that have this program. Beaver Creek started in 1987. They have 20 people on their program. They, uh, what they do is they, there's no, they make no arrests or anything like that. They come in no contact with criminal. They're just eyes on the street helping the sheriff out here to observe somebody breaking into a car, breaking into a, a, a house. Uh, a fight on the corner. If the fire department needs a, assist and they're out there, or the squad needs assist, they can help for lift assist. It's all volunteer. Nobody gets paid for this. They got to be 21 over, have a valid license. 
They must live in the city or own a business in the city. What is, you know, yes, the city's going to have some cost to this. And the course is roughly three to four months to go through the course, which is taught by the Sheriff's Department. They're taught traffic control, CPR, uh, you know, like if there's a fire, a deputy blocks, helps block off the street, the COPP can be called out to relieve the deputy and get him back on patrol. And let's say, most generally, if you have a domestic deputy, if I can ask you, you get, if you go to the house and you've got the, the person that started the assault, is it two and a half to three hours by the time you make a complete arrest, by the time you take them to the jail and back? So you, you don't have a deputy in the city, but you've got a COPP patrol patrol, two people at all times. And like I say, nobody gets paid for this. They come out and volunteer. Uh, I've been in touch with Sergeant Humble, who runs the one over in Beaver Creek. Centerville has 10. Clayton has it in their program. They have 10. Uh, Fairborn has 12. Uh, guys, now I can't remember, it's all blank now. But they're all over the state. Cincinnati has it, Blue Ash has it, Centerville has it, uh, Hamilton, Delphi, and, and Delphi is just a small community, and they've got a program like that. All, all they're doing is running around, observing what's going on to try to help the sheriff be an extra eye. You know, they're not going to make an arrest. Huber Heights has it, but there's a little bit there for taking a help assist in cuffing, uh, search of a building, and they can write parking citations. I don't want that. That's put too much of a risk back onto the city. All these people are going to do is observe what's going on. If there's a problem, they can radio to the sheriff dispatch. She can get a dis deputy en route to the problem. You sit back. You don't, you don't confront them. You observe if there's a lot of traffic, footwise or car traffic, which most generally is a drug, drugs, correct? Oh, I won't make that assumption. Well, I mean, most generally you can. If there's a lot of traffic, it's something you want to pay attention to, but I won't make an assumption. Well, no, I understand that. But, you know, this is something that can be given to the sheriff so they can further investigate it. Like I say, before this could go into effect, it's going to be the first year of 2016 because you've got to do a background check on everybody. If you send 10 people in for a background check, two of them aren't going to make it. That rule of thumb. Crime is down in Beaver, in, in Beaver Creek, 25%. Fairborn's down to 15. Clayton's down to 12. Uh, some of the other cities you're talking 35, 20% down on the crime because usually after they see this car coming up and down, it's got a yellow light on it, and it's got a decal on the side of the door. Once they start seeing this car coming quite a bit, they know it's not a safe area to be breaking in the house or cars. And all it is is an extra set of eyes out there to help the sheriff's department and to help protect the citizens of the community and get a hold of a deputy and get them out here. The same way they can spot a house fire. Notify dispatch, you can get a hold of the fire department. There's good use to it. Plus, in your festival and that, they can help you with traffic control. Your, your uh, uh, market that you have downtown, they can help with traffic control. They're taught this. If there's an accident, the deputy's tied up trying to get the street cleared up, they can also help uh, control the traffic for the deputy. The whole, whole thing is get him back in route and get him back doing his service again. And plus, be an extra set of eyes in the city. Uh, Deputy Chief Wright was at the neighborhood crime watch. Council member Mr. Lowry and Mr. Craybacker were there, and he discussed a little bit about it. And like I say, I'm here to try to get the support, get the backing, so we can try to get this going. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Right. Sir, I've got two questions for you. Um, the first one is, you mentioned the training. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on the training they would go through. And then the second one, I'm not sure if 
you uh, found this out in your conversations, but um, how is uh, insurance or liability handled with people in this program if, if they were to be hurt or if there in, would be an incident or, or however that is? In the program, the city has to cover workers' comp on it. That is required. Uh, but they're, like I say, they get, you're not paying these people, they're volunteer. The training is like, say, three to four months they're trained in CPR, they ride with the deputy to see how it goes on, how they communicate with dispatch, how it's required for you. They spend time with the dispatcher to see how they receive dispatch. So if, if there is an incident and you're trying to call them, you're not out there screaming and hollering at the dispatcher because she's not responding to you. You have an idea what she goes through. You're trained in CPR. You're trained in traffic control. You're trained to not get involved in anything except sit back and observe, contact dispatch, let her send to Calgary. You go to a safe area, try to observe, observe what's going on so you can keep dispatch informed what's going on until they can get a deputy there. Anyone else? Let's go to, go ahead, Mr. Williams. When you had first called me about this, I'm totally still in support of it. I was kind of worried. I didn't want us to have some guy running around with a gun or taser in the car. But after talking to you, it's not going to happen. I'm totally in support of this thing. It's something we should really look into. I think it's going to help us get like I said, an extra set of eyes and it's going to deter some possible issues in the future. Okay. Yes, sir. Ron, I don't know if you can answer this or maybe Randy, since you guys have spoke. And I'm sure it will depend on how many uh, volunteers we have or how many we want to get. What kind of startup cost is looking into something like this? I mean, how Do what now? Startup cost? Ballpark? You're going, to have, you're going to have to get a car because you don't use your own personal car. Two reasons. One, one there, if they use their car, it now becomes a liability to the city if they are involved in an accident. Second, I wouldn't want to be in my own vehicle out here and a bunch of vandalism going on and I report it and then my family's out driving the same vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have to have like a golf, uh, some kind of a shirt with the emblem on it, COPP. Okay. Did you have anything else, Randy, on that? Uh, yeah, notice? yeah. I just want to bring to council some of the concerns that I have with this program. I think in theory it is a great program and I do appreciate, appreciate getting involved. I think before I would really make that recommendation to council, because the night was just informative for him, I would want to sit down and crunch some numbers a little further. You know, I just for the council, just be aware that, you know, um, if there is any cost for the courses, that the three to more training cost, we would have to incur that cost, not those going through the program. Another thing, too, is the workman's comp, is, the workman's comp issue really scares me. Um, if, if I know that he won't be chasing criminals, but if he's going in, or whoever is working that particular ship, if they were to happen to go in a speedway and slip on ice, you know, there still is an area for them to, to get injured. Um, the vehicle, too, is another area of concern. We're very limited on big vehicles that we have anyway. They're not new. Uh, we kind of got to use them to get through for the next couple of years. Uh, then we have additional cost of decal on that particular vehicle, which we don't have a second one to decal that the city doesn't use for other everyday purposes. Then we have to pay to get lights, and now we have to pay for the additional gas. So I think council should really think about it and allow me to crunch some have in-depth numbers because tonight was just important informational base for you. Um, and Ms. Harris, didn't our BWC rates just go up significantly? This year they were doubled. They were doubled, you know. So what's good? Pure workers comp. Workers comp. Workers comp. Workers comp. I think no. you might have trouble hearing you out here. Okay, sure, sure, absolutely. You know, so to, to, to me, like I said, Mr. Cobb, I appreciate your time. Uh, I would like to crunch some more numbers. Uh, but I think that in the future you'll see you know, our crime rates go down by actually having police officers in town in the very near future. So, again, um, and for informational sessions, I do appreciate on that. I will be getting with you here in the coming uh, week or two to, to sit down with you further to really discuss it. That's a good question. Hey, well, anybody over here, questions? Well, I had a couple comments and questions. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Please. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate all the work you put into it. I also not disagree with you, but I'm for it myself. Uh, I do have a question. At the crime watch meeting, I know you were there, you were there. Did the deputy was there say that the sheriff would pay for the training? 
I, I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. Did the deputy at the crime watch meeting say that the sheriff's department would pay for the training? I know he mentioned something about it, but I there can't was, There was it. nothing mentioned about the training. Okay. Who would pay for that? Okay. Uh, the main thing was to get information about this and, and, and get some information to you and then sit back down with right. uh, city manager and Sheriff Dean Kelly again and go through it, work all the fine details out. Okay, thank you. And I do think we need to look at it, Randy. I, I agree that more eyes out there, you know, I, as the deputy stated, you know, he's sitting in a corner somewhere, he sees something happen, he writes it down on a piece of paper, makes a phone call, and uh, every police officer I've ever talked to in the last five years has told me the same thing. They're covered up with paper. And, you know, I think more eyes out there is a good thing. I'd like to see it looked into. Thank you. Well, like I say, they're required 16 hours a month, four hours a shift. That's what they volunteer. And they're rephrased every year back in training for a short time with the sheriff department. If they don't follow the guidelines out here, they're pulled back into the sheriff's office. They get one chance to retrain and come back under control. If not, they're dismissed from the program. Mr. Cobb, I have a question for you. Have you talked with other people on this? Have you had people that would volunteer for this? I haven't yet, no. All I wanted to do was have my ducks in the water before I come before you. The reason I ask that is we have problems trying to fill other things for the city at this point, different committees and so forth. That's why I was wondering if you have people that have stepped forward at this point that would be interested in doing exactly what you're saying. I haven't really talked it around the city yet. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Zambla. Uh, the sheriff is supportive of the program? Yes, sir. Because since we're contracted through the sheriff's department, we have to go through the sheriff's department. Right. But as long as he's supportive of it. I mean, I he is supportive because, like he says, when the deputy is transporting prisoner, you're usually looking at three hours when he's out of the city. Yeah. There's an extra set of eyes running. And they, they patrol the whole, entire city through that ship. Well, thank you for your work on it so far. I wish to echo yeah. with the other. Mr. Reynolds, you had a, another so, question. I think it's to be a question for the city manager, uh, Ms. Harris. So if we were to look at this and it would start next year, would we be allowed to use the levy money from the police? Because this would also be something that is associated with the police, with our police force. Could that, those monies be used potentially? I believe so. Okay. We can look into what, like you said, the cost is. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I just wondered if that was a possibility. So, thank you. I'm sorry, Randy. No, uh, please go. Ron, just like everyone else, thanks. I, I, I like it. I think it's a good idea. If you're going to do some crunching and, and, and checking some numbers and things of that nature, I, could we maybe do a work session on this down the road? Because I think everybody likes the idea. It's just there's a bunch of question marks on because we don't know how the process is ran. The only thing I would like to see, honestly, is for Mr. Cobb to get a list of people who can dedicate themselves to doing this. Um, I've read over some of the packs that he got me, and you know, a lot of these programs will start off with X amount of people, <coughs> dwindles, dwindles, dwindles. I don't want council to accrue extra work. I certainly don't want to accrue the extra work. If at the end of the day we only have two people commit to this program, you know, or we have six to begin with, and at the end of the time we only have two left to do it, you know, so um, I don't have an issue with looking into it. I just want to make sure it's worth everybody's time. Uh, Mr. Two things. Um, Deputy Wright said that Beaver Creek they had like 40 some at one point, but then it kind of fell off. So mm -hmm. that does happen. Um, have you figured out, Mr. Cobb, uh, the hours? Because I noticed in the packet several times it said it's like we're early in the morning, like past midnight. We, we kicked it around with Sheriff Kelly and Deputy Wright, or Chief Deputy Wright, excuse me. We was looking like anywhere from about 10 to 2 or midnight to 4. Okay. Is when we feel that you know, most of your crime is going to happen, people's in bed asleep. And you know, even though you still have a deputy patrol. They're still out there. He may be on the south end. They could be over here on the north end, Norwood, Willowick, observing what's going on. I think a lot of you know car break-ins, anyways, 
early morning, like after the midnight, between midnight and six. I mean, you know, that's what they tell me in my neighborhood anyway. It's like four o'clock in the morning. But I'd like to express to you, they do not get out of the car, go tackle this sucker, and sit on it. Oh, no, no. Their job is to go to a safe zone and observe and stay in communication with the dispatch so she can tell the deputies what's going on. Also, anyone else? Any other questions or comments? City manager, any comments? Thank you so much. Thank you for all your hard work on that. And if you can see, like the city manager said, if you can see if there are people that would step forward, that would be good to know. Well, I say, I, I, I got to tell you first. I want to get some kind of answer before I start. Okay. Because there's got to be applications put out. They give them to the sheriff to do a background check. See, the background check is going to cost us also. Is that correct? I say, we haven't gotten into that because I want to get it to you first. Right. I understand. Meet with the deputy chief and then tell again to finalize that part. Okay, thank you for all your hard work. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we're at city manager's report now. Uh, none this evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, we actually do have a little communication. I'm sorry. Mr. Kiko? Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. I'd just like to give you a quick update of some information that uh, I have gained via our meters with the pool and uh, the three days of Tecumseh who rented our pool, very big success. Uh, we generated around $1,600 for the three days that Tecumseh rented our pool out for that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then opening day was just this past Saturday and uh, at least it was hot. The pool brought in uh, $2,100. Uh, they did increase, uh, did gain some past sales. Um, I would also like to, because of our meter pro uh, project we did, we have a data logging meter down there and I had a um, conversation during council with uh, Mr. Reynolds he had asked me about the leakage I now have an updated amount the loss of water per day now is around 800 to 1100 gallons per day uh, where I previously said around 7,000 or so um, with splashing during the hours of splashing this past Saturday it ranged between 600 and 1000 gallons per hour so the the use of the pool is actually more water being out of the out of the pool being used up than it is from just sitting there in leaks so i, I logged the pool during the days it wasn't open but full we're running 800 to 1100 per day but we can also pump that when the pool is kids in and out of the pool and we can do that in an hour mm -hmm. so that was just some updated numbers because of the data logging we can do thank you thank you Mr. Lowry. Mr. Kiko, can you go over the, uh, or, or what was the highest amount it was losing a few years back? Didn't it go from around 30,000 a day down to seven? And yeah, it's down to we, we've had some 30,000 days uh, years ago. Um, now with the Tecumseh kids that were in there, they had almost 200 kids swimming and they were right around 12,000 gallons for that day. And I thought that was extremely high and I thought how much is leak? So that data logging told me that 99% of it is uh, the kids playing and not leakage. So I just wanted to bring that up. They, they were waterlogged, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, uh, so yes, so much. The question now, you're talking about how much water is splashed out and lost. How many gallons, just for reference, did the pool hold? 284,000. 284,000. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else, city manager? Staff? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your. Uh, oh, no, I was. No, it's okay. okay Not a question about the pool, but I'm going to be, be the guy to ask it. Um, I know that um, you've been pretty proactive in, in working with the police situation after the, the ballot issue, uh, after that decision was made by the voters. I was just wondering what the status is. I know, I know you've been talking on, on how you want to approach this as soon as we can get contracts or whatnot. Um, is there any updates on, on the issue with returning the police officers? Any new information? Uh, we actually had a meeting with me and Mr. Lair had a meeting uh, with uh, Gene Kelly, and we will be bringing back some what we call special duty uh, uh, officers, um, starting uh, hopefully around June 8th. And what that's going to give us is just, we have a little bit of the money that was appropriated for this year that we can use for that. 
So we will uh, be bringing back some uh, special duty uh, deputies to help offset the lack of coverage that we do have. Okay, and I just want to thank thank you and the mayor for the work that that you've put into um, getting us back on track so quickly, um, as quick as possible. So thank sure. you. Sure, absolutely. What the special duty? It's you bring somebody in just for hourly rates. Is that what? Is that what we used to do for? Um, Heritage of Flight does it for special occasions, yeah, stuff like that. You can yeah. have a I don't <clears throat> don't remember if we did or not. I think we've had special deputies in the past. Okay. It's a way to get extra it's, coverage in the city. But it's working it, with the union is yeah, what we're yeah. trying to do at this point. So we'll get there. That's all I wanted to hear. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have a question. Does Dr. Turner please order the pool? Okay. The bridge. I'll be for our plan. Okay. When is it going to close? Second question I've heard they're going to straighten out the first turn. They're going to turn the bridge. That's correct. I don't know much about that project, to be honest. No, no. Uh, I'm still waiting on an update on closure. As you can see, they're doing work out there, right. grubbing and stuff, uh, utility relocation. I have not heard the curve straightening. Okay. Well, I didn't. Yeah. I heard they're not taking all the way out, but they are changing the angle of the bridge to take away some of the turn. Now, uh, that's true. Yeah, I, I haven't heard, and okay. I've been in most of the, you know, some of the um, meetings with them on this. Still no idea when it's going to close? It, um, it's just, it's a kind of a, when everything gets utilities get relocated okay. when they actually get that contract on board so it was supposed to be about mid-summer but it sounds like they're they're moving pretty quick okay thank you anyone else questions comments i i have one mr picker if you would uh, yes. leaks last time we were together you had four or five are we caught up with them at this point leaks. water leaks water leaks in the water system oh. uh, we have uh, two, one on uh, Scott and Washington that we got to get repaired, and we have one other one. We did hit our major ones already. Uh, we're trying to gather some time to get those, uh, but we, I think we have two to go. Is that one like a valve or something that is leaking? We, we feel it is. That's what, yeah, we feel it is. That's why it's taking us a little bit of time to make sure we have all the parts on hand, because once you dig that up, there's no stopping. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? Okay, we will continue on. Uh, comments from members of the public? Anyone like to speak this evening? If you would go up to the podium, name and address, please. Hello, my name is Nancy Lubanovich. I live at 505 P's. And I, I'm not sure I understand the terminology of leaks. To me, a leak is a hole you plug would you explain to me what's leaking on the pool um what's leaking on the pool is the cracks in the concrete on the bottom of the pool so once you fill it you can't do anything about the leaks we've already tried to repair some of the leaks um, some of the cracks can not be repaired due to the nature of the of the pool without tearing some of it out okay so it's better just to let it leak no we have we have fixed some but you can't get all the leaks that are in the, in the deep end the deep end of the pool sits in the water table mm -hmm. and right now they don't make uh products well out of our price range of uh, products that they can inject into the ground and it comes in the backside. we've done some of that years in the past but it doesn't always fix them okay so there's always some leaks water always in the they, pool? they keep reoccurring every year and some you can't see the cracks might be underneath the paint that you can't see and water can leak through pretty much um, various pores okay and there's no sense in trying to replaster the whole thing uh, we had looked into that and it's extremely expensive and we're talking a couple hundred thousand okay and we're losing how much every year um in in a day it's about 800 so about seven dollars a day and is that year round or just when it's full? Uh, just when it's full, just when we're in operation. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Anybody else like to speak to see? Yes, sir. Name, name and address, please. William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. I'd like to have more information on the Madison School project that isn't a project. It's just a building sitting there. What is the city doing with it? And I understand it was sold once and then brought back or something. I just want to know what's going on at that school and why it's still there. Uh, I, I will pick up where Ms. Jones left off. We're looking at different funding options. 
These things don't happen overnight. We've had plenty of interest, but when people come and they realize the cost associated with it, they back out. So uh, I do know that Ms. Jones was working with David Fleck out of the Clark County to maybe get some grants to help out with that, but nothing's changed on it probably since the last time we discussed Jessica openly in council. Okay, I, I didn't had been here when they was talking about it. Uh, so you actively trying to sell it then, or? Mm -hmm. you know, okay, sure. That's all I want to know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would you like to buy it? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'll give you a dollar for it. Fair enough. You got to tear it down within six months, though. Tear it down, you know why. At a joint government meeting, mm -hmm. Commissioner Lones said he would look into finding us some help for that and we'll get back with you. Has he ever got back with you? On that? No, he's not. And we're meeting again the 29th. 29th right here so bring that up if you would please we'll do that okay because okay. i know yes, he said he would definitely get back with it. it's going to be hard to find funding to help get this yeah. thing tore down a lot of these grants to get wider structures are gone and geared for zones and commercial zones this is a, a building in a residential zone part of town you know so i don't want to go on record saying it's not going to happen but if, if that was like on main street we probably would have that thing torn down well, he did say he would do what he could. He didn't promise anything. They he could just give us money out of that casino fund they got now, couldn't they? That's right. Now, they can let go from that much. We're going to project for the summer, and the kids go in there and just beat it up, and eventually they have to go to the ground. They already do that. They already do that. That's why I said it. They're kind of getting trouble with it. And they, yeah, and they catch it on fire and everything else. That, yeah. That's, again, fortunate part. Anyone else? Anything? Anyone out in the audience like to speak? Well, all right, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. All right, we'll go on any committee reports tonight. Uh, none this evening. None this evening. Resolutions, there's none. Ordinances, if you would, please. Mr. Collier. Ordinance 15-20, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing an addendum to clarify certain provisions of the client service agreement with MediCount Management Incorporated, formerly known as MBI Solutions. Council. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Will we adopt ordinance 15 20 Second. I heard two voices. You Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Sure. Yeah, so explanation of this ordinance. Um, MediCount was is formerly MBI solution, <coughs> Solutions, excuse me. And since uh, MediCount has now taken over this, uh, they have offered a few different um, options that we can they can give to their clients and this first one is having to deal with using an automated um, use of an automated dialer system to collect miscellaneous information uh, and missing insurance information or any information that would be relevant to processing the billing claim from the EMS agency so it's actually giving us a better product well it's giving them a better project I, a product i would say they would be able to just have a computer call you instead of somebody calling and calling you yourself mr phillips is here chief phillips is here if you'd like to explain it maybe a little better than i am uh, yeah essentially the, the system as it was prior to medicount taking over they were able to have one of their folks call about 40 uh calls per hour and the auto dialer would dial about 300 700 calls per hour uh, all it's doing is calling it, if you answer the phone, it'll give you an automated message saying that we need this information, please call us back. It either, uh, if you answer or if it gets an answering machine, it will never call you back again. If it doesn't, if no one answers, you don't get an answering machine, it'll just call you back at a different time. Um, it's just a way to speed up their system in processing the information. And I will add that since MediCount has taken over uh, MBI Solutions, we've already seen a, a more rapid uptake of our EMS revenue. Or billing money's coming in. They, they had about a four month backlog when they took over from MBI, and that all has been cleared out in the last month. So, uh, this is, uh, again, this is just another option for us that we did not have to do. Good. Council, any questions? Anyone? Mr. Collier, if you'd call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craig Bacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Passes 7 to 0. Thank you. On your right, sir. Ordinance 15-21, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing an addendum to clarify certain provisions 
of the Client Service Agreement with MediCount Management Incorporated, formerly known as MBI Solutions. Council. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Will we adopt Ordinance 15-21? Second. Mr. McIntyre, that time. I'll let you get that made. <laughs> What's the difference between the two, if you would, gentlemen? Uh, basically, it's again, MBI Solutions has taken, I mean, MediCount has taken over MBI Solutions. And this is just an option for um, uh, their uh, people to use their credit cards to pay. So simple as that. There is on um, Section 2 on here where it says credit card fees. And I just want to clarify this with Council because I had to clarify this myself with Brad. And it reads to credit card fees, an additional 2.95% fee assessed by the third party credit card processing company shall be assessed directly to the patient. If the patient fails to pay such amount, the EMS agency, i.e. us, City of New Carlisle, shall be responsible to pay such third party, call, third party costs as set forth <coughs> under the service agreement. Um, I need a clarification for that. It just didn't stick out for me. Uh, it didn't sit well with me that if they didn't pay the, the fee that we would have to, but uh, Chief Phillips had explained a little bit better that, you know, if they don't pay with their credit card, the fee's not going to be assessed in the first place. Um, so there would be no kind of uh, money owed from the city. Essentially. So this would not come back on the city? No. That's what you're saying? Absolutely is that no. correct, Chief? Is correct. that how you read it also? But they're legally obligated to let you know that that is possibly the case down there. But this is an option that we never had before. People could get online and pay with a credit card, which, again, will speed up processing and progress. Thank you. Council, any questions? Mr. Carrier? Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Thank you. Ordinance 15 22, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new backhoe in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. Council. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes. The motion to adopt Ordinance 15 22. Second. Second. It's an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this was, uh, this is an ordinance for uh, the city to purchase a new backhoe. Uh, the purchase will be made out of three departments, water, wastewater, and the street department. Um, all the money, the, the payments have been appropriated from the prior administration. Um, this was up before, but we let it die because I wanted to kind of look at it since it's under uh, my administration that this would be purchased. Um, me and Mr. Kiko, I went through the data, uh, and I thoroughly support uh, the city purchasing this new backhoe. Questions? Yes, Mr. McIntyre. I, I've got a number of, of questions on this, and they may be dumb questions, so let me know if they are. Um, look, looking at this and this purchase, and I know it's not coming out of the general fund. It's coming out of water, wastewater, and the streets capital improvement. So it's not a general fund issue, which is where we've had the problems. Now, looking at the budget that we passed a couple months ago, whenever that was, um, and this sort of list, where the money is going, where there's some big items to be purchased. And on the first page, it's uh, um, uh, number six, uh, down in section I, it talks about the need to have this, this backhoe, and we need to get a backhoe because the thing's falling apart. So we all voted on this, and the budget was approved by council with the backhoe being in there. So it's something we knew about, and I guess we were okay with it. Um, looking at that and talking about the price, because I know it's, it's already been appropriated, the budget that we approved here, that money was already in there for it. But looking at the, um, the price for it, it's, it's what, 90-something thousand dollars, whatever the, the, uh, it is in the budget here, 91. Um, 95,000. Thank you. Yes. So looking, looking at the numbers here, I see that um, under this section on the same first page, it says about, uh, what, $6,000 from one department for the backhoe. And then so I went to the other departments on which the, the, uh, the wastewater and the uh, wastewater and water to see where the money was going to come from. And I see that there's um, an allotted amount for $56,000 for improvement expenses. In another category, there's $19,000 for improvement expenses. So when I do the math, I come up with like $80,000. And so my first question is, 
are we buying this thing out right? Because if it was appropriated for, and I'm looking at the numbers, I see $81,000, not $91,000. And so I know that the money's in there, and I don't know if I'm looking at this wrong because my numbers aren't coming up. Um, that was my, my first question. Second question is on this first page. It also says the backhoe's 30 years old. It needs about $16,000 worth of repairs. Um, so my second question is why can't we just do the $16,000 worth of repairs? Is that feasible? And now my third question, I know I have a lot for you. Third question is with the warranty on it. The warranty, because I know that warranties have been a big issue. A lot of people, a lot of residents have come up to me when we make these big purchases and they want to know about having a warranty. The warranty is for one year, and that's not that long. So I was wondering, my final question is, is that a standard thing when you're dealing with equipment like this? The first one is where's the money coming from? Can't we just repair it? And the question about the warranty. I know that's a lot. Uh, first, I'll start with uh, the easy one, warranty, construction industries, usually standard uh, uh, bumper to bumper one year. The second year is powertrain, unlimited uh, hours uh, up to two years. So you could put 2,000 hours on it in those first two years and you're covered. After that, there is no more warranty. And that's just the standard in construction. Um, it is very rare that they'll offer, like you do when you go buy your own personal car, you can get above and beyond the three year 36 and get the extra. That's usually not in the construction, construction industry and let alone commercial use. Um, there's really no difference between residential and commercial. So that answers the warranty. Uh, as far as the, the repairs, um, the, back, the backhoe right now's value is uh, 11900 The repairs that, that I had um, had the guy come up and give us an estimate on is uh, basically pin work, um, some king pins, stick linkage, some suspension stuff, and a little bit of hydraulic work. Um, that was going to try to keep us going a little bit till I really you know, wanted to go get a new backhoe. Well, here in the last year, we have noticed just hauling topsoil two weeks ago. Steering linkage broke. We had shifter linkage break again. So we're starting to find a lot more things that I did not uh, intend or have in the budget for. So that's what made me go out and start looking for something new. Our current backhoe is 21 years old. It was bought brand new then. Um, so pretty much the operators that have been here at the city, we know who, how it's been operated. Uh, we don't beat our equipment. Um, so as far as repairs, that's the repairs for that backhoe. And I think the first part, all oh, the amount is 6,000 per department uh, for approximately six or eight years, depending on the financing. Oh, oh so this is, a, this is a payment process. It's a, it's a not payment buying for, it. okay. correct, for six years. So what we approved when we approved this budget was with the anticipation that this would be for a payment process, not outright. Correct. In the, okay. in the capital improvement plan, it is labeled for year one, two, the, the following sure. couple years. All right. So that's where I was mistaken looking at that. That's basically how we purchased Everything. fire equipment, new fire engine, all that type of stuff. Sure. Yes. The same type. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Who's next? Go ahead. Two Who's questions. That? One, you are anticipating the six-year payout on it? I have the six, seven, and eight. Uh, we think the six is uh, within is within the budget, pays the lease interest, and from the first year, six years on, we've already kept the one we got so long, so we know that we won't be paying on something for a long time. Second question: Even though the uh, current backhoe is slightly less than pristine, <laughs> is, is there any market for it at all once we acquire the new one? Um, I had the guy come in for the the market is for our own use to do some of the jobs where we're not driving around on the highway, for instance, uh, some wastewater use, loading salt. Uh, that's a lot of what deteriorated the front of this is uh, technology, what well, I want to call it technology. The style now, you can easily rinse the new backhoes out where the one before, for instance, pump was mounted there. It's, we've already replaced it a couple of times. Uh, right now, the value of it without them coming to look at it is 11,009. And we can the, sell it for that? Well, he hasn't been out to look at it, but I would say probably less. So it's better to keep it in our hands for that emergency backup if we would ever need it. How much would it cost to make it minimally functional so that you could use it as backup? Um, right now, I'm sitting in a, probably right around another 16000 to get it where I think it's probably operational. I don't know the longevity past that. It won't put us into uh, years of getting in, say, 2006 or newer getting into something that just hasn't been beaten down. Mr. 
Mr. Reynolds, do you have a question? He had actually asked my question for me. Okay. So, thank you. Let's go with him. Right here first. <laughs> Mr. Kitko. What's up? Would it be, would it be beneficial, like you are talking about bringing up cars, when you buy a car, everyone knows it's you know, $30,000, but you buy one that's six months old, it's you know, 25. Is there any benefit of looking at that option, buying one that's six months old or a year old? I did, I was on as much as Google has for equipment trader, tons of places, Ritchie Brothers, they do have various areas that they deal with. I mean, there's no, numerous ones. Currently they have four sitting in the, in the state of Ohio over here. Uh, no, don't sure what, the, what they'll go for, um, but they've been averaging anywhere between uh, 65,000 to 75,000. The thing to consider is we get 45% off the cost, the retail cost of the backhoe through the state con purchasing. So a construction company usually will pay more than what a government agency will pay for the same unit. Um, the used ones that I found on there, uh, for instance, were running, uh, and it, it's all dependent on hours. The big thing about a construction piece of equipment is the hours used. Ours has 5,000, and the ones that I saw, like at Ritchie Brothers, all average 4,900, 5,000, 6,000, um, and, and they look good. I mean, they do. They look near brand new, but it's the functionality of what we're having the problem with. I mean, I could get something like that. Uh, some that were 2001s to 2006, as I saw, that were in that $20,000 range were sitting at around the 6,000 hour range. So what are we getting into? What construction company had it? Were they good operators? Did they beat it? Because we currently have the demo uh, from Southeastern, a case back of sitting in the hut that we've had for almost two weeks, and we're kind of beating it. We want to know what this thing will do for us. And uh, so, you know, if we're doing it to try and test out a piece of equipment, um, who, who knows what they've done. And we don't use our backhoe as often as a construction company does either. Most companies don't keep their backhoes 21 years. Will it also, will the new one save us man hours on doing a job? Um, well, we've already had, uh, we did a dig up. Dave has done the most with it so far. Uh, we did a dig on Zimmerman, and just in the project, we think, it, it may sound small, cut about 10 minutes off the travel time, because the new backhoe came with a suspension portion on the bucket with loaded gravel, and it actually absorbed it, and he didn't lose any material on his way back. Where with the other one, it was rigid, and um, it, we lost, you know, we, we lose material uh, out on the road, but we noticed digging speed, power, uh, the whole nine yards, just what you would expect uh, that, that comes with a new one. Thank you. Okay, you have three options here, though. Option one, two, and three. And you said that you could try to do option one. But would we vote on this? Are we voting on whichever one? Uh, you're not voting on any of the financing. The financing portion is a guideline. Uh, case financing actually had those options. And that financial institution had matching. And if I go, I'm looking to visit you know, if it, if it passes, then to visit more financial institutions, uh, the two other local ones I have. But I wanted to see if a local one would give me something similar to what case financing would have. Okay. So the financing still up in the air to try and beat that interest rate and get it even lower. I think we're voting on to get permission to go ahead and, and purchase, is that correct? Correct. It's about the signing to make the purchase, not the specifics and the financing. And the language of the ordinance does dictate the threshold of dollar amount to spend. <clears throat> well, it says not to exceed 100,000. And again, everybody needs to know that it's coming out of actually three different pools of money. It would be, uh, again, if you'd reiterate that, it's coming out of water, wastewater, as well as streets. Is that correct? Yes. What about cemetery? Would it be used at all at the cemetery to do that? They have their own. Uh, they have their own small one. Uh, this one's too big, as with our current one, to get in the middle of the cemetery to dig. It usually does odd and end jobs out there. But if we were replacing blacktop or things of that nature out there, streets, it could be used for that. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone, please? I guess we'll call for the vote. Then. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. No. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. I know it's needed. It's also a situation of we don't want to injure any employees. And this could happen with that one or we've had on top of the operator. Uh, 
So I would vote yes on this, as long as it's you taken out of, as we've already stressed, mm -hmm. different and, and put into paid over a period of time, whatever time we came up with, six, eight years. Mr. McIntyre. Well, I'm not happy about it, but if it was something that was that big of an issue, I probably should have brought it up when we were approving the budget the first time. And based on the discussions today, I can tell it's needed, so I'll, I'll say yes. Mr. Zambach. It seems to be the best option we have, yes. Mr. Reynolds. No. Passed five to two. Thank you. Okay, when you're ready, if you'd go ahead, please. Ordinance 15-24, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 61515. An ordinance amending chapter 880 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle due to voter approval of additional one half percent income tax for police expenses. If you go ahead, please. Other business? Well, let's go into other business first. Other business? Any other business tonight? Anyone would like to bring anything up? Can I make an announcement or something? Please, go ahead. Um, each year, the, the Church of the Brethren makes, um, they have a concert, concert on Main Street, music on Main Street, so it's called. And this, this Friday night at 7 o'clock in the parking lot, we're having Ohio British Okay, Ohio, Ohio Valley British Brass Band. You know, out in the parking lot there. Yeah, so everybody's welcome. You know, it's, it's free, you know. Just come buy some popcorn. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other? Yeah, this way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Give me a message. 613. Flag Day, that retirement of the American Legion post creates six. Flag Day is actually the 14th of this year, and also that is Father's Day. And that falls on a Sunday, so we're going to do it on the 13th this year. Uh, as you all know, can't give you a time. Fast Tracks will be there jumping out of the airplane somewhere around dusk, so you know, you just got to get there early, kind of wait for it to happen at dusk. Uh, if you've never seen it before, and I stand in here, it's really something to see. Uh, the yeah. Flag Retirement Ceremony. I'd like to see each and every one of you. Um, I've heard also that the Air Force Band may be there this year. Is that correct? It is, but I don't want to bring that up because when you say Air Force Band, you think 150 people. It's going to be, I think, a six-piece band. Okay, yeah. so it's... Yeah, it's they, they did an yeah, excellent not, job at the Heritage of Flight. Right, right. yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, a lot when you say the Air Force Band, a lot of people think, you know, the whole thing, and it's really not. But yes, you are absolutely correct. They are going to be one. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is actually more towards our citizens. I think I've asked addresses with each of the council members. Um, I'm looking at ways to redu reduce our printing costs at the, at the city building. We're, we're just printing too much. We're printing way too much out than we should be. Um, we generally supply guest packets for the council meeting, and I'll continue on making a few, maybe two or three, maybe up to five. Uh, but some of the bigger agendas that we have, or more people that we have coming, um, it's just it it takes a lot of paper. Um, and a lot of other municipalities do this. Uh, I'm thinking about putting a link on our web page, web, web page that will allow our citizens to just download the packet themselves and print it out from their house. How does the citizens feel about that? Because you would be the one occurring the cost of the paper at that point. Yeah. Well, Randy, most, most individuals would just pull it up and read it. They wouldn't even print it off, so they still need the purpose. Well, if they wanted to bring it, I mean, yeah. they would have to do that. I mean, you can just access it on your smartphone for all I care. You know, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, if that would that be an option that our citizens would be okay with. I would like that. Fair enough. Thank you. Like uh lady here says, not everybody the senior citizens don't have I would still make about five to bring. So those of you who did not have it, you could get your own or preferably share with your neighbor. That's all. Okay. Anyone else? Anything other business? You ready? If you would, please. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, June 29th, uh, 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House at 
and it will be hosted by the New Carlisle City Council. And as the mayor mentioned last meeting, the food will be prepared by the Clark County Commissioners. Is that no, I don't believe it's being prepared. It's going to, the cost is going to be cost is, by the, oh, the cost of it will be provided. We, we will have to get the food and have it here. And That's right. Casino, give them no the bill. Casino. Casino. <laughs> food. Yeah, Steak right. and lobsters? Uh, fillets, I believe, lobster. No, I'm kidding. Where's out the grills? I don't know what we're going to do yet. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and chips. These chips <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, Easy to right. do. Cheaper, we're feeding them. What else do you want? <laughs> There'll be a crime watch meeting on Wednesday, June the 10th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Yes. On last day. It's first of the month. Everybody has a birthday this month. Please go to the license bureau to get your license plate renewed. Uh, if you get the thing in the mail, just throw it away and go to the license bureau and get them up. Thank you. Okay, executive session. There's none tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Wait, put the glasses back. I, everybody, I want to just you, to notice your glasses. <laughs> Like a little incognito tonight, standing <laughs> under the radar. He was going to sing for us, but then he decided not to. Do that. <laughs> so, Mr. Zambach, what would you like? I move we adjourn. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we are good.